What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. It's a very different type of episode today because I'm not in, I'm not in the kitchen, which is, I'm usually right over, usually I'm right here. But I've now reached 30 episodes of the show. That's 30 Julia Child recipes that I've made. And I think that's a good enough milestone to review and rank all the efforts so far. It's a level playing field today. I'm looking at desserts and main courses. It's all gonna be judged with the same two eyes. And uh, I think we should just start at the very bottom of this dumpster fire and work our way to the good stuff. Number 30 is the moussaka. Tragedy strikes. This is by far the worst thing I've made on the show. Uh, that's <laughs> terrible. It was terrible. It was ugly looking, unappetizing. It was dry. I spent the entire day on it from the morning until like 1030 at night. And I thought with that much effort involved, you know, I might have something that I could be proud of. I was really expecting like something beautiful. Well, something beautiful. I scarfed it all down because I was starving, but I hated it. <laughs> What 29 is the gnocchi? I mean, if there's gonna be anything to rival the moussaka for that dead last place finish, it's this. I made this thing twice in the day because the first time I messed up. So I wouldn't be able to tell you where the hell I went wrong, but that's not right. So I thought, okay, let's just focus on the words on the page and try to match as closely uh, to what Julia Child was saying in the recipe. I, okay, so I focused and I still didn't get it. <laughs> It was bland. It looked bland. Everything about it is the blandest, blandy, bland. Just a very, very disappointing dish. And this was just a few weeks ago, sadly, so it's very fresh on my mind. <laughs> Am I missing something? Number 28, lobster thermidor. I love lobster meat, but I feel this dish completely wasted it. It doesn't need a lot to like complement it because it's just so good on its own. But this recipe uh, had this like very thick, creamy sauce that was uh, completely drenching the lobster meat in it. It tried to like steal the show from the meat. I, I wasn't on board with that. Of course, the sauce also had to split when I was making it. So it wasn't a well-made sauce that was covering the meat. So now this sauce looks It was just an overall crummy dish. As a shame too, because this is my first time like killing and cooking a lobster myself. That hurts. This one hurts. Number 27 is going to be the fish poached in white wine. The main part of this dish was supposed to be the fish, but with this like another thick creamy sauce, um, it just completely stole the show yet again. Fish vanished. It was gone. Like I, I couldn't make out every time I took a bite where the fish was. In fact, I'm still looking for it. So if you've seen it, 26, saute de bouffe à la Parisienne. Beef sauteed in mushrooms and cream. I'm just gonna lump this dish in with the previous two. So I look at them all very similarly because they are all dishes that had that very similar heavy cream sauce that I'm talking about. You know, of the three, this is the best. So I'm gonna put it ahead of the other two, so. It's got that going for it. So we're gonna make a salade niçoise, which is salade niçoise and is number 25. I enjoyed it, but I found, I found that there was a, a little too much going on with it because I also like covered it with dressing, right? For the show that it was like, you had to eat it all in the moment. So it was just like an overwhelming amount of food to eat and it was just salad. So, um, you know, it's just a salad. Number 24 is the cheese souffle. With souffles, to me, there isn't much to uh, get too excited about, honestly, besides watching them rise in the oven. Uh, that's like the whole thing about them, because besides that, I don't really get them. And once I take these souffles out of the oven, they just start sinking. Number 23 is Chicken Vaterzoi. From this one, I was reading a different cookbook than I'm generally used to. This was the first time reading 
the French chef cookbook. There just wasn't enough like words on the page for me to like truly like figure out what I was making. You know, was it a soup or not? What am I doing? Honestly, what am I doing? Like I want to eat this like a soup, but I have this like big drumstick in here. I like the taste of it. It was really good. It was just like, it was confusing. Number 22, eggs poached in red wine. This is an interesting dish. I think it looks really nice and it's uh, poached eggs. There you go. Number 21 is the roast chicken with port wine and cream and mushrooms, or poulet au porto. I look at this dish as two different things. Like I have the famous roast chicken recipe from Julia Child, which is very labor intensive and there's a lot of work involved, but oh, it was tasty and it was cooked to perfection. I should have stopped there, but I had to continue and make some heavy creamy sauce to go along with it. And at the end of the day, that's what I think about. So that's why it's placed right there on the list. The cream sauce is holding it back. So number 20 is the quiche Laurent and the quiche Roquefort. Roquefort. How do you pronounce that? Roquefort? Roquefort. It's a cheese. Honestly, I'm not really a quiche guy. It's one of the least exciting dishes in the world to me, but I enjoyed what I made. Mm. Mm. I'm not usually a quiche guy, but consider me, I guess, well, I am now. Something about it eating it fresh that really makes an impact. And that's why it's placed number 20 on this list for quiche on my list. That's pretty good for a quiche. So number 19 is gonna be the Palm Anna, which is, it's a buttery potato cake. When I took it out of the oven, it didn't last long. I ate about half of it and then there was someone else in this house that ate the other half and then it was gone. As good as it is though, it's not the best potato dish on this list. So um, let's move on. Now number 18 is the Kilimanjaro, chocolate burnt almond ice cream. And it's my most recent creation. Announce the name of your snow-capped mountain as you bring it to the table. Le Kilimanjaro. In the moment, I was head over heels in love with this thing. And uh, it's very reminiscent of another very rich chocolate dessert that's on this list, which we haven't got to yet. So that's why I'm placing this one here. I'm gonna work down our way and find out what the other one is. There's lots of exciting things happening on this list. Number 17 is Ratatouille. Episode number one is my first time ever making a Julia Child recipe. Okay. I'm using some of my least favorite vegetables here. There's eggplant, there's, um, there's a zucchini. I don't know which one I dislike more. I really enjoyed it a lot. And it was an incredibly uh, refreshing dish. It was healthy too, which I mean, the first dish that you make of Julia Child's is a healthy one. And changed man, how oblivious I once was. Number 16 is the chocolate almond cake. It was called the Ren de Sabah. It was just a lovely, pleasant cake. Really, truly. I think this deserves a better place on this list, but hey, there's tough competition this year. Okay, we've made it halfway. Number 15 is going to Vichy Soise. Potato leek soup served cold. This is the classic JC, JC recipe, Ju Julia Child. Julia Child! When you have the option of a hot or cold soup, I'm always gonna go with the hot version of it. So that's why I'm ranking this here on the list. It would rank higher if it was hotter. Okay, it's hot. Soup's amazing cold, how does it taste hot? That's one versatile soup. Number 14, creme brulee. I never had it before until this show. So, you know, it had high expectations to meet and I'm happy to say that they exceeded them. Are you kidding me? This one in particular was kind of difficult to like- Seating creme anglaise, but use half- This dish was kind of difficult to film, just for me personally. It's hard to have it look exactly how it's supposed to look on camera when, you know, minutes before you were torching it with a blowtorch, and then 
and then you're taking photos of it for like the next 15 minutes. So it became room temperature for the video. However, I left one in the fridge overnight and the next day I had it and very much enjoyed the creme brulee the way it was supposed to be eaten. So I had the one that had set and I had the one that was more room temperature. Both were fan fantastic. So next up, number 13, we have Milfoy and Napoleon, which are like pastry desserts. Although in the looks department, there's some refinement needed here. Yeah. I, <laughs> I can say that these things were sensational. They're very fresh and flaky, spot on. Filling was, I'm not a huge fan of fondant, but when you make it yourself and you eat it fresh, it's a whole different story. So everything about this thing, besides the visual aspect of it was a-OK -okay in my books. Number 12, you may be surprised by this one with the high placement of it, but it's garlic soup. I go boido. This soup stole my heart, quite simply. Very garlicky, yes, but I liked it. Because of the simplicity and it being pretty good for you, you know, it's something that I've added into my cooking repertoire outside of the show. So I love the garlic soup. Boom, moving on. Number 11, we're going with the Gratin Dauphinois, which is cheesy scallop potatoes. This dish has like sentimental value to me just because something I've had throughout my life, you know, around family and holidays and stuff. So it's a dish that I've always loved and I had never made it myself prior to this episode. It's the superior potato dish, in my opinion, to the palm Anna. It's just, a, it's a shame that it's not, it's not cracking the top 10. It's just on the cusp, 11 finish. But that's what happens uh, when you make a pointless list like this. We have now cracked the top 10, exciting, exciting. Number 10 is, uh, ooh, this one's gonna ruffle some feathers. Number 10 is the Coco Vin recipe. Classic, classic Julia Child recipe. Uh, it was very early on in the series when I made this. It was the second episode. When I had it in the day, I remember enjoying it, but not being like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. No, it was really good, but I, even that day, I knew I could do better. I was still figuring out a lot of things. So that's why I'm placing it 10th place. If I made it nowadays, I could place much higher. We'll see, one day, maybe. Number nine is going to the Booyah Bays, which is something that means more to me than most other episodes. This one took a piece of my soul, not the fish. There's lots that I had to figure out even before cooking with like what types of fish I was gonna use and where to find them and speaking to the fishmonger and requesting things, and not sounding like a tool. Do you have like a, like a fish head of, that I could also, like a cod head or a... Oh, no, 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 no. no? Oh, great, yeah. That's awesome. Fish heads. We're gonna start with the hake fish, which is the scarier looking one. Remove the gills by cutting them where they are attached at either end of the arch that they form. Oh, for And by the time I made it to the end, which I thankfully did, the dish was great. It was a delicious fish stew. Fish, mussels, and scallops. Ladle in some of the soup with the croots and then some potatoes. Wow. Not every episode do I go through what I went through in this one. So it's the whole experience right there. Let's put it in my pocket. Ah! Number eight, we're going with the chicken supreme. It's something I cook with regularly, which chicken supreme, chicken breast. You know, it introduced me to a new way of cooking chicken breasts. On top of that, there was a freaking mushroom cream sauce, which yes, I've been critical of these cream sauces, but this one was fantastic. And I could just eat it, and I did eat it just by the spoon. That just literally took my breath away. It stole my heart and it's running away with it. Wear it heart. And then on top of that, I had some glazed carrots to go along with everything. It was just, like, love the dish. Number seven, we're going with the tarte tan. Upside down apple cake, tart, pie, something. It's just a classic dessert. It's a classic taste to it. Classic, classic. So number six goes to the chocolate mousse. So remember I said that there was a superior chocolate dessert coming up? Well, this is it. This is the one I was talking about. This is chocolate perfection. The taste was just on point. The consistency of the mousse. A plus, creme anglaise on top. Look at that thing, which, 
We love the chocolate mousse over here. I love it. Number five is the cherry clafouti. You know, any dessert with cherries in it, I'm on board with, of course. But, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of this. <laughs> clafouti. Seriously though, as soon as I found out what this dessert was all about, I became obsessed with it. And for the, like the next two weeks after this video, I, I made this recipe, I made this dessert like two or three more times. I tried it with blueberries at one point. It's just like, I love this dessert. Big slam. Number four is the French onion soup. This was an early episode, uh, and this is kind of the game changer. This is when things started to click, in my opinion. This dish showed me like what you're capable of making in your own home. Like when you have a solid recipe and you can maximize flavors like you're doing with like onions here. This is a special bowl of soup. <laughs> it's not every day where you're able to just whip something like this up at home and it be this good. It's a masterpiece. If we're looking at this like the Olympics, this is our bronze place. This is gonna get a podium position. This plate of food was some of the best cooking that I've ever done. And this one may be a shock, but I think it earns its place as number three, the beef tornado dinner. This episode means a little more to me than others. First off, it was the last video that I filmed in my London kitchen before I moved. So, um, sentimental cook. This is gonna be the last episode in this kitchen. Uh, oh. I came up with this plate of food. I, like, I went through the cookbook and I, I, I figured out what would go well together. And I came up with the beef tornado, which is essentially a filet mignon. You, you make this Madeira mushroom sauce that you pour on top. It's like the best sauce I've ever had. I picked two sides to go along with it, which is uh, potatoes cooked in butter and asparagus cooked in butter, and the whole dish was a perfect 10. Every single bite of that was... Number two is the beef bourguignon. Of course, is this right here is the Julia Child recipe. For me, this is the first time I was ever introduced to this type of thing, like the slow cooking of the beef where you take a bite and the beef falls apart. is one of those groundbreaking cooks for me where um, it just started to uh, show me what I was capable of if I just like read the recipe. It was everything that I hoped it would be and thank God it was because I had heard about this one forever and uh, I can tell you that this thing exceeds that hype and then some. It's one of the best meals I've ever made. Now, number one, I don't know if it's much of a surprise. If you've been watching, you know what I think about this one. But it's the Flaming Crepe Suzette. And dip that into the flame. There it goes. Now, fearlessly step up to the plate and baste the crepes. And baste them. And keep on basting them until both the flames and the applause subside. Oh, Susie right here. She blew my mind. <laughs> this is the best dessert I've ever made, best dessert I may have ever had. What? I didn't know what I was expecting and um, wow. You know, homemade crepes completely f***ing soaked in this orange butter, and I mean soaked in it. It's like an overwhelming amount of butter, but it's dessert, who cares? It's the best, it's, that's the best? The best dessert. <sighs> some terrible food, some mediocre food, some really good food, but that's about a, a year of my life right there of cooking, so uh, there's a little snapshot into that. Where will we be in another year? We'll see. But this was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. No food today, but see you later. Bye. Ah! <laughs> bon appetit.